Well, hey, everybody, and welcome. I am so excited you can be with us to see these featured authors today in our Thriving Through the Chaos Summit. We want to share with you, I say we, that sounds really weird, like it's the royal we, but all of us at the Author Incubator want to share with you just a few of our authors to help inspire you, show you what's possible, maybe spark some ideas in you of new things you can do or try, and bring you what all of our authors do in their business. The one thing that our authors all have in common, which is that they are bringing hope, healing, and transformation to the world. So whether that's to people's lives, to their bodies, to their businesses, to their relationships, what all of our authors have in common at the heart of all of their work is hope, healing, and transformation. And um, I'm really excited that you were motivated to hear these stories because that tells me there's a spark in you that brings hope, healing, and transformation to the planet as well. I think one of the things that's beautiful about this crazy time is that we're seeing how we are all connected, how there's no way to separate cities or countries or borders. We're all connected. And the way I think we all heal is together by raising not just the vibration, but the actual actions that are happening in the world, whether that's by making businesses more green, by making uh, people, all, uh, helping people have better relationships with their body, with their families, with their friends. All of this is how, what I always say is together we rise. And I watch as our authors lead the way. And the four authors that are featured here today are all leading the way in their towns, in their communities, in the populations they serve. And I'm excited to share their stories with you. If you are here, you are probably aware that I am Dr. Angela Loria. I am the founder of the Author Incubator and creator of the Difference Process for writing a book that matters. And to me, a book that matters is a book that gets into people's hands. That means we focus on marketing the book so people actually get them. It gets into their heads. That means we want people to actually read them and get information from the book. And most importantly, it gets into their hearts. And that's where the transformation occurs. The difference process leads to books, but those books have to come from authors. And so the company is called The Author Incubator because our focus is on creating these transformational authors that aren't just trying to get their books out there, but they're actually trying to get their ideas. Sorry, I got excited. Get their ideas into people's hands, their heads, and their hearts. So we'll share about that today. I'm going to start off with some simple introductions, and then we'll move into what the last six weeks has been like for these authors. So I am going to start and move uh, from East Coast to West. I'm going to start in the great state of New York with Po Hung Yu. Hello, Po. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. I'm excited to share your journey with people a little. Let's tell them a little bit about you, what you do, and um, where you come from. So I'm in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm an acupuncturist, but I am uh, I have a business that's the program that I offer that I'm helping magical women to birth what they have been just dating for so many years so they can share their gifts with the world and rise into leadership, and that's been super fun for me. Um, and so, yeah, I work with the magical energetic realm as well as the business realm. So I kind of mix them together and I kind of pretend that it's like Hogwarts with a business division. Nice. <laughs> I'm sure Hogwarts had a business division for sure of it. So you've been a business owner for a long time. How long have you been almost, in business? Almost 20 years now. That's crazy. Wow. And I know you're an acupuncturist. Have you had other businesses as well? Yes, I've actually had, I had a pet sitting business, which was my first business when I was 27 years old. Um, I was a realtor. I, I've done all kinds of financial uh, endeavors, um, real estate investment, 
um, also other little small businesses here and there and a bunch of different uh, coaching programs. So yeah. Lots and of then you wrote and published your book in the last six months or so, right? Yeah. What do you think for you has changed either in your business, your life, in your head, but what's changed with being an author for you? What hasn't changed? That's really the, the question. Like literally my whole entire life has um, gone into the vision that I had seen for myself years ago, actually. So I was, I'm not surprised to be here, but it is an amazing process because when you write your book, for me at least, when I wrote my book, it cleared out um, my throat chakra was blocked. And so I needed to clear this energy in order for me to actually step into the next level of leadership for me. And that's why I guide women in clearing their, their energetic blockages so that they can actually rise up and be in the powerful uh, position of making a difference in the world. I love it. Awesome. Well, we will circle back around to what your business has looked like in the last six weeks. I know a lot has changed for you and um, it's pretty exciting. I want to introduce everybody now moving north in a circle. We're going to go counterclockwise across North America. We're going to move north to Toronto, north and west to the lovely Jill McCabe. So Jill, um, introduce yourself. What do you do? Tell people about your book just so they have a little context. Hey there, I'm Jill McCabe. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Uh, I am a business coach, high performance expert. My main thing for a long, long time has been working with entrepreneurs at, who are already in business for some time, who are ready uh, to either stagnate, ready to grow. And I help people uh, reach predictable profit. Uh, I, with the author incubator, it's a bit bright there, but I wrote, it's go time. Uh, the all-in system for unstoppable success in business and life. And I'm just going to jump ahead. And it was life-changing <laughs> since I just heard you ask that question. I'll let you kind of guide it, Angela, but that was the best Well, thing. you published literally six weeks ago. I literally published six weeks ago. Right as all of this hit with the pandemic. And so um, what a crazy time to publish. Ha! <laughs> That, you know what, that, ta that actually taught me you, you can't mess up doing a book um, because mm -hmm. I wrote a book called It's Go Time <laughs> about high performance at a point in time where everybody was being locked down. So it really felt odd. And yet my business took off anyway. Um, I couldn't, I didn't really feel that comfortable telling people like, buy the book, buy the book, buy the book and my business took off anyway. And so it's almost like you can't mess up becoming an author. Like that's, that's really what I learned. I don't know if you know this, but my, my holding company, my actual original company name is Becoming Journey. It turns out it's a terrible company name, but the purpose of it is, I always love that saying, it's the journey, not the destination. And so that company name is about becoming the journey instead of becoming the destination. It's just really moving into that journey. What is so powerful to me about writing a book, becoming a best-selling author, doing that work with your editor, envisioning your launch day, all of those things, they change who you are. Yeah. The book is kind of irrelevant. My clients get a little mad when I tell them that. And if you're watching this and thinking about working with us, sorry, but the truth is the book's important and it's nice and it's great that I'm in this beautiful library and I love books, but the book is a fraction of what's really important, I think, about a book journey, which is how you change. So, all right, we'll hear more about your last six weeks soon. I'm going to keep moving counterclockwise around North America to Northern California. Um, and I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Mindy Pels. Hello, Mindy. Hello, hello. I feel like I already want to comment on what the other two said. Do it. You can comment, but tell people about who you are too. <sighs> okay. Uh, let's see. My background is I'm a chiropractor. I've been in practice for 24 years. And um, in the last couple of years, I launched a virtual world teaching people how to do keto and fasting and detox. And so I really have now sort of 
two businesses. I have my brick and mortar business, and then I have my virtual business where we take people through different detoxes. We coach them with nutrition and fasting and things like that. So tell me what you wanted to comment on. I'm curious what inspired. Oh, well, I, I took notes because I just love, I love like in like rich conversation. Like I just love it. So anyways, okay. Poe, I totally agree with you that um, the vision you had for yourself, because my staff keeps telling me this, that as we're, as we're morphing, we're like, it's almost like the universe is pushing me into the vision I had for myself and I wasn't going to get there by myself. I needed a freaking pandemic to move me there. So that was, that was the first thing. And then when Jill was talking, I was like, yeah, but it's go, it is go time. Like it's go time. So yeah. it's like a perfect name. I was like, no, I, I don't know a better time than go time is right now. It's go time. So that's all I had to say. I love that. I agree with that. And I, um, yeah, I, I, there, we have one author who I love. I need to see how he's doing. His name is Ron Wilder. He's an amazing guy. Coaches, CEOs, kind of a business coach, but a, but a um, blockbuster. Just really hitting upper limits and busting through them. And he said to me about his book that it was a true book release. He said when he released that book, it was almost the end of a decade of work. But it was like the capstone that now it's out there. Now I can see it like freed him to see the next vision for himself. So he's like, oh, I did a book release with you, but I just released that book and I moved on to all the next stuff. (laughs) It's funny. Nobody comes to me saying that, you know, nobody's like, I want to write a book and then switch everything I do in my business. Like, it's just not the dream. And it doesn't happen for everybody, for sure. But for a lot of people, it's just like, they don't realize it, but they've been flipping their book over in their head for so long that getting it down on paper kind of frees the next vision to come in. Yeah, I, that's I, kind of how I feel is like, oh, I, I should probably still nurture this book that I just wrote, but I already know the next one. Mm-hmm. I, and I'm like, I'm already tempted to write it because of the process, for sure. Awesome. Cool. All right. Last but not least, we will move to Southern California to the lovely Karen Laurie. Hello, darling. Hello. And I just love what everybody else is doing. And thank you, Angela, for inviting all of us. Um, So my name again is Karen Laurie, and I help people release unconscious blocks so that they can really live a magical, priceless life. And what you guys were saying about the books is so true, because as I wrote my book, well, I've written two books. As I've written two books, um, my, my, I'll just give you the thing. This is the second book. It's called Effortless Enchantment, and it's a memoir about my life of magic and magnetism and miracles. And then this is Chronic Pleasure, which was my first book, and it helps people let go of uh, fatigue and pain and have vibrant energy and chronic pleasure. And, um, and what happened as, you, as I wrote the book is it just it, it clarified so much that I had done to become who I am. And it made me see myself better, which then I now go through the world and I feel seen. I just went to the grocery store this morning and everybody was like saying hi to me. I love your energy. It's so, you know, I mean, I have a mask on and they're like, you have such a great smile. And I'm like, you know, I have a mask on. (laughs) But but thank you. (laughs) And so that is really... Um, it's, it sort of opens up the ability for me to allow others to see me yeah. as I really am, which then allows me to see others even more clearly as well. So I love the whole process. Like a virtuous circle. Yes. I call it a luscious loop. Or that, <laughs> even better. For me, I, I don't know if I've shared this with you guys, but um, I... I was very lucky. I always, from day one, when it came to books, the universe has always supplied me with a steady flow of clients. I've always had clients, and I would meet them in the weirdest places. I got a client once walking around Uluru in the middle of Australia. I got a client (laughs) once on the London Tube. Like, literally, it didn't matter where I went. The universe was like, you should work on someone's book. It's good for you. Just do it. But I was always nervous. So I would, I would, I I did so many books and I was so good at what I did, but I never knew what was going to happen on the phone call when I got on the call with the author. And I was always wondering, because I I was a ghostwriter. 
And I was always wondering, like, will I know what to say? What if this one's hard? What if I don't know this topic? What if I can't learn it? And I was always nervous. And when I wrote my book, I realized I had a process. I actually got into a fight with um, my very first author is a woman named Allie Cudby. And she was with me when I was trying to figure out what the difference process was. She actually named it. And I remember getting into a fight with her and being like, every book is different. There is no process. I get on the phone with the author and then I talk to them and it depends on what they say. There's no, there's not a process. And she's like, yes, but there have to be some things that you always say. I'm like, there's some things, but I say them in a different order. And sometimes I don't mention one thing at all. And she's like, yeah, but if you think about all the books you did, there's probably a process. And we were on, we were in Half Moon Bay. Mm. We were walking along the beach in Half Moon Bay, which is one of the most beautiful places on earth. And we finally like sat down and I started crying and I was like, I'm never going to figure this out. And she's like, okay, well, let's pretend I'm writing a book. What would you tell me, the original ideal reader? And I told her, she ended up writing that book. Just this week, she <laughs> published another book um, and became a bestseller. She was our first bestseller, my first book. And it was just this theoretical example of what would the process be. And that is now the difference process. After I came up with that with her help, every time I got on a phone call with every other client or prospect, I could see where they were in the 10 steps Maybe they'd done two, maybe they'd done one, maybe they were on step four. I could see where they were. I knew how to orient them and how to fill in all the other blanks. I became so much more confident that my sales close ratio went up so much because I wasn't dreading getting a client because I was afraid when I got the client, I wouldn't know what to say. Even though I always knew what to say with every single client. <laughs> but my brain was just spinning on a loop. What if you get a client and you don't know what to do? And once I created my process, I knew I, I would never be with a client and not know what to do. So the book was kind of irrelevant. I don't even think my, of all my books, don't buy my first one. Like I really need to rewrite it. I mean, but writing it was the book that changed me the most. Like it's my favorite book because of how it changed me, even though I don't think it's my best written book. So so fascinating. So ladies, I want to talk, uh, first I want to say for those of you who are listening, wherever you are emotionally, I'm going to speak for everybody. You guys can correct me, but I think you'll agree with me. There's no judgment whatsoever. None of this is saying you should be working harder or how come your business isn't thriving or how come you aren't personally thriving? This today is a discussion about what's possible. And then you get to ask your heart, is this what you want? And what you might want right now is to rest and to wait for inspiration, to wait to get an idea. That's fine. Just know anytime you want to thrive in chaos, in good times, in bad times, Thriving is a choice that comes from you. It's always available. And I want to share how, while we've all been in these six weeks, and there are certainly people whose businesses have shut down, restaurants have shut down, people have gotten sick. There's also just as many bad stories as you hear in the news. There are wonderful, beautiful, amazing miracles happening all over North America. I'm going to share four of those miracles um, just so that you know that's there. It's available too. And this is just a little bit of um, good news for all of us. But I think part of how miracles happen and how good times happen has to do with your mindset. And so I just want you to think about when you heard about the lockdown, when you heard about the pandemic, what were your thoughts? What were you thinking? Just reflect back about six weeks ago. Were you feeling hopeful? Were you feeling scared? Where were you? How have those thoughts evolved? We're going to go on a journey with these authors. And I just want to start with each of you guys um, on when you heard about the pandemic, thinking about your business. Several of you had new books that were just coming out. 
about to come out in the middle of editing, making big business changes, the pandemic hits, and this can be an anticlimactic answer. There's no judgment, but what did you think when you heard there's a pandemic, we're going to be locked down? What was your first thought? Karen, I'm going to go to you first. Um, you know, it didn't bother me at all because I generally work from home and I, um, I live in a part of Los Angeles that's really, really beautiful. Um, and so it didn't bother me at all. I didn't feel afraid. I don't ever really feel afraid anymore. I used to have panic attacks and anxiety all the time, but now I just don't, nothing bothers me. So this didn't bother me at all. I just, um, came I, over to my house that night. I was out, yeah, I was over at your house that night. Yes, I was in DC. And then when I flew back, it was, it was fun. And even when I was going on the last day I was in DC by myself, um, you know, I went to the restaurant and we were, I was still hugging the waiters. I, mean, I guess I'm very affectionate and they were affectionate with me and, and giving my book to the waiters and, and different people there, you know, and, and met some people from Greece and they were so wonderful. And I speak a little in Greek. The week or two after about how much news would you say you consumed how much cnn how much new york times would it what's happening there i don't ever really listen to the news because what i realized i went one time when i was a, in my early 20s one of my first acting jobs because i'm an actor also was a movie in south africa and before i went to south africa i got i auditioned on a tuesday and i left on a friday so i didn't have much time but before i left for south africa I read the news from the American perspective. Then I got to South Africa and I saw the news and it was a different perspective. And I realized it's just somebody's opinion, the news. And that to me made me, since I've been in my twenties, I still know what's going on, I'm aware, but I'm not going to put any attention on somebody else's opinion. And just because I want my own opinion and I want really the opinion of, the uh, the the power that's within me that that what some people would call God or what you might call your source energy or your spirit that's the opinion I look for so I don't really pay any attention to the news although I will look things up if something seems intriguing or interesting to me and you know like for example there's millions and millions and millions of people every year dying of hunger but we're not having the same response to that as we are to the COVID. And so stuff like that, I'm like, well, let's, let's look at all of these things that are going on and see if we can find real solutions. And I've always found that there's innovation in every bit of contract mm. contrast and that there, you know, so many great ideas come from that. So it's, none of this has ever bothered me. I shouldn't say ever, but since I've been, I've been in a state of unconditional love for about 10 years. And so my nothing, so I'm just like, I, I go up, 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 up. Doesn't matter what's happening in the, in the world. Love it. Um, Jill, you were at that same launch with Karen. So talk about the first two weeks of lockdown and what were your thoughts? New book came out. You're making some big changes to your business. I, my thoughts were, thank goodness this book was written because it teaches people how to reinvent themselves. And I thought, oh my gosh, like had I not done this program with you, this book wouldn't be waiting for people. So I was in this deep state of gratitude because I, that book had been rolling around in my head for a really long time. And I'd been putting it off, putting it off, running my business, doing my thing. And then it just had to come out. And you know, Karen, you're talking about God or whatever's in you. I knew God was in me. There's no way that I worked with you, Angela. Remember, I hunted you down at that. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Running up and down the aisles. You're like, but they're not replying to my messages. I have to apply. And because what I thought was, I've, I've literally written a book that teaches people how to reinvent themselves from the inside out. Because I've had, so, I've had a number of sh terrible crises in my life. And, you know, the hard way, I actually had to learn how to reinvent myself several times. And so I thought, thank God I wrote that book. Thank God it's there for people. Uh, and the reviews of the book have really shown me that that's exactly what it's done. Despite the fact that everything was going on, I got a ton of reviews and they were so deep and heartfelt. And I just felt deeply grateful and a complete sense of trust that it... The other thing I thought, Angelo, was that what an... And this sounds kind of weird, but it was like, what an opportunity this is for a shift mm. or an awakening 
for, um, for healing. And because I've been through so many crises, I have trained myself to believe that they can turn out for the best. Yeah. Oh, wait, I love this. I have trained myself to believe they can turn out for the best. Yeah. I've trained myself because, and I've learned the shorter the time you can find to, to find that beauty in it, the better, right? So going through the number of things that I've been through in my life, um, really just taught me to sort of look at it from that point of view of discover what's there. Mm. You don't have to see it. You just, you have to discover it. And so it becomes the mission to make that happen. And I called everybody I loved. And that's what I said. I said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I said, look for something magical in this. It's there if you look. And I, like, I'm calling all my loved ones. And, I'm like, Please make this and now we're saying this to all of you. Yeah. I will say for me, the biggest word that I associate with this crisis is everyone talks about pause, like the great pause, we're on a pause. For me, it has felt like an accelerant where my business is going to be in let's say 18 months is where I think it would have been in four years. And that means I'm tired. <laughs> and it also means I'm doing a lot of really hard things. I was talking to Erica Flint this morning, who's one of our authors. We may feature her on one of these. And I was saying right now, it feels a little like I'm killing my own baby because I spent the last seven years birthing this beautiful business and these beautiful programs. And I can see, I, and I've had a vision for where we were going in four years, which as you know, includes moving to your great town of Toronto. So I'm like in four years, my kid graduates from high school. I've always wanted to live in Canada. I actually did live in Canada briefly when Jesse was a baby. I lived in Montreal and I've always wanted to get back to Canada. And so I'm like in four years, maybe I'll learn French like Karen is. Um, but in four years, I want to downsize my business and really simplify what I'm doing, minimize my staff, move everything to virtual. All my leases will be done. And I had this like five-year plan, four-year plan. It was a five-year plan because my kid was at the beginning of eighth grade. And when this happened, I was like, everything's going to happen so much faster. I'm not going to keep this event space if I can't do events for two years. I'm not going to keep a staff that comes into an office everyone's on my team has started moving because they want to be closer to their family or they're getting in long distance relationships and one person's moving. And I'm like, I suddenly have this virtual team and I suddenly have virtual events and everything I thought I was building in four or five years that I saw so perfectly is now. And I'm like, Oh, we're going to move at this speed. Now are we okay? Universe. So I do think there are, and I see that happening even with bookstores. So I thought bookstores had about another 10 years. I think that's been like cut way down to probably two years left. Like, I think that's the end of that. There, we're going to have something else that's even better than walking around and buying books. I think it's going to be experiential. I'm working on a cool software project on um, VR where you could go to a book reading with any difference press author and you could sit down with them and they'll do a private reading. You'll imagine reading it to your ideal reader and you'll be sitting on these chairs that are my green chairs that I've always done interviews on. And people can come in and sit on a chair and have their favorite author read to them. So I think there's going to be things that are so much better than bookstores where you're interacting with authors, but everything's going to happen so much faster. Wow. So... All right, Poe, trust is sort of at the heart and soul of your work. So I want to hear your thoughts. Being in New York, which was the first hot spot, trust being so central to your work, what were you thinking when everything happened? Yeah, so I had to shut down my acupuncture practice, which I've had for almost nine years now. So that was my main source of income at that point. Um, at that point, six weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and literally the day that I was supposed to submit my final edits for my book was the day that 
source universe divine told me no you're going to pivot uh your business from helping people release emotional and physical weight to helping women leaders rise and share their magical gifts. And I was like, what is happening right now? Okay. Um, and so that was me having to surrender to that. And I was, it completely blindsided me, kind of, um, because really it's always been brewing in me. Um, but honestly, there was a devastation in that moment, not from the business closing, but because of the Asian hate crimes was like so high, especially in New York City. And that literally put me into a state of terror that I've never experienced before because I've always had the privilege of being able to walk around the street and not feel um, like somebody could attack me, you know, out of nowhere. And so even though I've been discriminated against and things like that, but um, I never felt terror in my body like that before, but it was an amazing opportunity for me because I really believe in uh, rupture to rapture. My whole life is really about using my ruptures in my life, the, the, the shadows, the darkness, the, the parts of us that are being amplified at this time in the pandemic. Everything is like under a magnifying glass. We're seeing so much of ourselves, like the mirror is like so close to our face, right? And so, yeah, I just, it brought me into this state of rapture because I was able to really hold and surrender into um, the trust and into the divine, you know, and so that really is my work in so many levels. And so what did you, what do you tell yourself about the hate crimes? Like, did you say to yourself, I know I'm going to be safe? Or did you say, like, how do you talk to yourself when you're scared like that? I just let myself be exactly where I am. It's a, for me, it's about being present and not trying to bypass anything. And so some, and like making a pivot where I can. So in that moment when I was completely devastated after I saw the Asian sister's face bloody, um, I let myself just cry my eyes out. I just let myself be where I was, go into that state and be present with myself, be compassionate in that moment. And then just embracing that moment, it naturally starts to dissipate on its own. Love literally transforms and transmutes any energy. And so, yeah, just being so gentle and kind to myself and naturally I came out of it in this state of rapture and I was like, let's do this. Like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to like do this business and pivot and I- Do you know you wouldn't open or do you know now that you wouldn't reopen your acupuncture space? Um, I'm, I don't know what's happening. It's all unknown, and I'm totally on the ride on this this wave, like a surfer, <laughs> you know? I think, well, I love Rupture to Rapture. Brilliant. Um, and then I also love just the willingness to be on the ride. So one of the things hopefully you guys are picking up as a theme is that there's not a denial of what's happening, but there's a leaning into it. So it's like, if you're feeling resistance, if you're feeling like this pandemic is ruining your business, your plans, your book, your whatever, whatever it is that it's ruining, your marriage or your wedding, if you had one planned or your whatever, if you can lean into it and have that sense of like, oh, okay, the river's going this way. Let's go on this ride. It's a little bit of rapids. We're going for the class five rapids. Let's do it. You know, Angela, I wanted to just say that like, I think a reason why I'm able to move from rupture to rapture so uh, fast is because obviously from practice, right? Many years of practice, but also my playful energy. Like I'm a, I am love to play. I'm so super curious. I, I'm all about pleasure research. And so like, how can I use this experience to really explore what's happening here? You know? And so I think that that playfulness really helps a lot. I love it. Well, Mindy, you've got a bigger team. You have, like Poe, you have an actual space, um, like a physical space to walk into. So what were you thinking in March? We were, we were launching your book, but from March 16th to March 30th, what was coming up as you were editing your book? Well, going to the question of like, what, how did I first respond? I'm like listening to all your answers and I'm like, 
shoot, I was not that enlightened. I'm going to be really honest. Like the day we found out that we had to close our brick and mortar or we thought we had to close, I was actually in my office. I had had several podcast interviews that I was doing that day and I could hear my staff next, next in the room next to me, like gathering, talking about something. And I'm like, what are they talking about? And I walked over there when I got done and you could see the look on their face of like, who's going to tell her? <laughs> like, and so finally my office manager said, they just, they just closed everything down. We're going to have to close the brick and mortar down. And we since have been able to stay open, but we're at about 50%. And what I will tell you happened to me after I had my momentary freak out is I had had a mentor of mine tell me a story about how he wanted to take a virtual practice, move out of his chiropractic practice and grow a virtual practice. But he had all these reasons he had to stay in his practice. And through a series of events, one day he showed up at his practice and literally the front doors were chained and he couldn't get into his practice. And I thought about that on that first day and I thought to myself, okay, this is your chain door moment. So, and when he told me his story, there was a part of me that was like, that, I think that's what I would need. I think I would need those doors to be chained in order for me to fully embrace my virtual world. And so it would, I just have used it as my chain door experience. What am I going to do? That's closer to what my experience was like, yeah. has been like, is like, okay, let's go. We're going to do this. Yep. But maybe yes. And there's like, especially when you have people's salaries and, you know, yeah. buildings and leases, the more you have there, like, you know, it piles up. How am I going to manage all this? Yeah. And I think having, it sounds like most of us have gotten through a crisis before having that experience of knowing I'm going to come out on the other side, Yeah, a big piece of it. Yeah. If you don't have that now, um, one of the things I was saying to myself a lot in early March was I had a full-time W-2 job for the 2008 meltdown and for 9-11. So I kept saying, I've never had to navigate something like this before. I think I said it 3,000 times just because I wanted to make my life harder. Um, and then one of my coaches said to me, why do you keep repeating that? How is that helping you? To repeat that. And so I started building an evidence log of times that I'd gotten through hard things. And that was partly uh, due to some people in my business, Robin, my marketing guy said to me, but you've been through so many things harder than this. And he just rattled them out. He's like, but, yeah, but don't you remember this, this, and this? But in my head, I was like, I've never been through anything this hard. I have no capability. Um, this, is, this made my dissertation, my PhD dissertation, it made it take an extra year because I loved this sentence. I have no reason to believe I'll be successful at this. I kept saying it. Why the hell would I pick that? I was like, I've never written a dissertation before. I have no reason to believe I'll be successful. And it was like a year of just choosing to believe that. So you may be there. It might be interesting for you to play with an evidence log of hard things you have done. If you're feeling like you got to work with your kids at home, which is one of the challenges I have right now, um, you've done that in the summer, or maybe you've done that on Christmas break, like building evidence that you've done stuff like this before for me has been super helpful um, in just like creating my own resilience that I'm going to get through this. And I love, you know, rupture to rapture and Jill with your stuff knowing how many times you've been through it. It's, I think it's good to hear other people who have been through crises, knowing, having that inner knowing. If you don't have it yet, which I didn't, that is something buildable and learnable. And that's what I've been focusing a lot on. Yeah, and can I, can I just make yeah. one statement on that? Because I think the words we say to ourselves are, is so important. Like, um, so I used to, for the longest time, I, when my kids were little and I was running a busy practice, I would have these moments where I'd be like, I quit. I'm done. I'm done. I can't do this. And I'd look around and I'd be like, oh shit, nobody's listening. Okay. Well, that's not an option. So I came up with like, nobody cares if I quit, I can cry, but the next day I got to get up and I got to do my shit again. So I came up with this phrase that serves me really well. And it is failure is not an option. Mm-hmm. 
And so that's kind of what I leaned into. Okay, what are we going to do? Because failure is not going to be the option. That one's not on the table this no. time around. So, okay. Uh, I want to talk about April. Uh, I want to talk about the month of April. I want you to think about revenue and anything else that comes up, maybe physical things, personal things in your relationship, in your home. And I want you to think about last April. So let's do April 2019 compared to April 2020. Or if you have another, just like, where were you when the pandemic wasn't a twinkle in anyone's eye in terms of revenue in your personal life? And then what happened for you in April in terms of revenue, your personal life, your home? I want to get a sense. And you don't have to do April of 2019 if you want to pick another date. But I just want you to say, where was I this month in comparison to a non-pandemic month? Jill, I'm going to start with you. What a crazy two months to compare. Last April, I was going to write my book. It's go time. <laughs> um, I, I didn't because I needed your structure. <laughs> I'm dyslexic. So I needed that structure to take. Thank God you figured out that structure. So last April, I was just getting back. I had been in uh, Singapore. I had been work, working there with clients, working in Bali, had an extended trip. It was all so cool that I was going to come back and write. I came back, um, actually had mm, pretty much an upside down experience with uh, my partner, my live-in partner, who uh, was not super great with uh, me traveling around and doing all this work, and sort of landed in this, uh, frankly, a huge depression. <laughs> so, and I had really hit this, probably one of the lowest points, like, um, I had had two years of rehab after a car accident or 18 months, lowest point probably since then. And just couldn't like, just was like, almost like what is left? Like I just felt so drained. Um, people actually interesting, like people not happy for my success last year, like people like good friends sort of like being angry about my level of success. And that sort of made me pull back a little bit um, and kind of feeling badly for all the success I had. And, and so I actually just stopped. I went from being super like everything's great to like brrr, and kind of going inward. And then if you just like skip past a whole year of <laughs> of overcoming that um, and all sorts of other things. This April, I, I released the book of, you know, when we said I released it and then um, I've had an unbelievable April. I've, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've done in a month what many businesses would be proud to say they did in a year in sales. So um, was it like two or three times what you were doing last April or was it like April, last April was yeah, off the charts. Like I'm saying I did in the month of April what some people would be excited about doing in a year. So it just was huge. And I did that. Be and what's interesting is because all these people are saying, well, I have to pivot because of the, you know, and some people really do. And I have, ha I did have some clients who had to pivot. So I had all these people ready to work with me in April. And I realized that like only one of them who's in major events, like they work for the Olympics and major car companies, whatever, only one of them really had to truly pivot. And everybody else, like I'm working with like a chef, artist, writer, coaches, um, and all of them, not only did they not have to pivot, we kind of just had to realize like they needed to be virtual, right? We had to create a virtual way of having a business. Um, but all of them are actually making sales right now. Yeah. Um, except for maybe two, because they just don't want to, and they'll make sales next month. But, but I was like, just all of these industries, right? And I mean, like, they have nothing in common, like an intuitive or this or that. And not right. only are they making sales, but people are like hungry for the, what they're offering. So yeah, one I, of the things I'm, that makes me super nervous right now is the number of sudden experts on pivoting your whole business. Yeah. There's like 3,429 offers on change everything. Most people do not have to change everything. Oh. Now, if you were doing catering for the Olympics, 
Yeah, they're do like they do events installations for the Olympics, but I've yeah. actually and some other companies, but I've actually been working with them and you know you were talking about the cool virtual stuff. So I I had to pull them out of my program because my program didn't fit their needs. So I working I'm working with them and they're actually creating stuff like what you're talking about, Angela. They're creating these cool, wicked, like because no people aren't gonna stop needing to be entertained. People aren't gonna stop like as human beings, we can't help but want to build ourselves. We can't help but want to grow. So it doesn't matter that I have a, like a cook, an intuitive, a novelist, uh, you know, coaches, like an IT guy, like all of them are successful because other people realize, yes, yeah, some people don't have the time because they're dealing with their families. That's cool. Some people, it's not the right time for them. They need to kind of go inside and heal, but some people need to keep going. So for you, was April one of your best months in business, best month in business? April is probably my, uh, one of my top months in business in my life. It's amazing. April 2020. April 2020. The world is yeah. ending or maybe not. <laughs> Sometimes I feel guilty about that, but it's true that it's really like, uh, no, you know what? I'm going to call it. It's like the best month in business in my life. Amazing. It's amazing. So much of that, and, and there are a lot of people who are having great months, that is possible. And so much of that is what's in your head about it. Like you showed up for your clients. Um, I said, we're gonna make this work for all of you and you're gonna have amazing businesses and they're gonna work. And I don't exactly know how, and I'm gonna do whatever it takes. Let's do it anyway. <laughs> I love it. All right, Poe, you changed the game. You flip the script, um, April, should have been zero for you like brand new business just came up with an idea so let's talk about how last april looks compared to this april last april was beautiful because i felt, had an awakening i had shed my body armor which was the inspiration for writing my first book right and so i had gone through this huge unveiling and you were in your acupuncture business Yes, I was doing my acupuncture business and I had already been feeling like that was easing out. I knew that there was something shifting in me. I knew that I was wanting to write a book and wanting to create a remote business. I already had that in my body, um, but I didn't know how. I didn't know. I had no clue and I just trusted it would show up somehow. And of course, there you go. You popped in my world <laughs> magically in the perfect way. Um, so... I love how I look at last April was like this shedding for me in this arrival. And then I was able to move the, the blocked energy within me by writing the book, right? And so I was able to step into this next level where I am now. And um, when this whole pandemic happened, I just felt this energy of the feminine collective rising. Like yeah, just, I got that too, big time. Like it was like, I get chills right now thinking about it, like just buzzing electricity turned on in my body, just feeling all of these women, like I could feel my soulmate clients buzzing, like ready to pop, ready to give birth. You know, they just need a midwife. And I'm like, okay, I can midwife you. And so it just felt like, okay, I have to be in service here. You know, like who am I to say no to this calling and to this energy that I feel that's rising in the world? We need to make a difference. There's some people who can, right? People who want to, not everybody, but those who have that calling, who like one of my clients says, she felt her heart being pulled like to doing this work. You know, like you, you know when you feel it. And so those are the women that um, I'm serving and it just feels so good to be able to be in service, you know, like help the collective, help the world on a bigger level. So, so aligned, your vision is recognized. It's actually happening. And that I made a lot of money. <laughs> and I was going to say, and then revenue wise, was it one of your best months in business? It actually was actually like I've made a lot of money in acupuncture. I've been, I'm a successful acupuncturist, but yes, I made more money this month in April, well, last month in April than I have ever. And I was amazed actually myself, but then not because I was so focused. Like I was able to really set my mind on what's possible. And I think that's really a big blockage for most people is that they don't think 
that things are possible for them. They're not able to see outside their box, you know, this tunnel vision that they have. Well, I'll tell you, right, for me, April, was that, that tunnel vision, not able to see out of the box, but in a, in like an exalted way. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't, I know where I'm going. I don't exactly know how to get there. I have very limited information from source right now, but there's one thing that came through to me super loud, super clear, repetitively, which was right now, serve your clients. Don't get new clients. Don't worry about where your business is going. Show up for your clients in every way possible, like more than ever. And I was like, well, I really need revenue. And it was like, don't sell anything new. It, I don't know what it was, but like the voice was from source was like, money's going to take care of itself. You have a contract with everyone who is under contract with you right now show up twice as much. And so I was like, but everyone's having the best month ever. I want to have, I want to sell new things. I want to have the best month ever. And I was like, nope, ground in, show up, ground in, show up. It's all going to work out, ground in, show up. And it's, um, I think it's like, it goes back to that trust thing. Like you can be in a place of spinning, like I don't know what to do and not take action. Or you can be in a place of ingesting or gestating, I guess is a better word, right? And I'm just like, okay, I'm like getting pregnant right now. Let's do it. (laughs) Yeah, and those moments, it's like just taking the next right step, the next step that feels good in your body. You know, it's it's moment to moment sometimes. Yep. That's That's perfect. And that's totally perfect. So that might be where you are too. Um, I love the story with Poe of like, this has been birthing in her really for a year. She was lined up. It wasn't like she just made something up on April. She'd been doing that work for a year so it could drop in. The idea could drop in. And of course the timing would be divine and right. Those moments aren't, those overnight success people, those when it looks like it was a moment or it was a Facebook ad that hit or it was like one thing, it was never one thing there's always so much foundational work for everybody. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm doing foundational work and that's fine too. Everything isn't, everything isn't always about giving birth. Sometimes you're getting pregnant. So, and the stuff you said about divine feminine, totally. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. Oh, this is happening. I I was worried I made it happen. (laughs) <laughs> I, like, Did I create like because I've been supporting so many women on the rise of the divine feminine and I'm like I think we might have done this we're like okay we're ready bring it and that's why it's so and also we talk about it's okay to just be pregnant hey be, getting you know conception is hot and fun so like you yeah. know like the, all the stages are perfect and awesome but yeah the Love feminine it. is getting pregnant <laughs> yeah All right, Mindy, your business didn't, there was not a lock on the door, um, but you guys were, you had a bunch of rules you had to follow. Let's talk. Yeah, we, yeah, we, it's a, oh my gosh, it's exhausting. I get, it's horrible what we have to do in our brick and mortar. We've got to wear masks. We got to go let people in. Like it's super draining. So, um, but I would say the difference between last April and this April is that last April, the way I look at it in my mind is I've got my brick and mortar and I've got my virtual world. And last year it was like brick and mortar was here, virtual world is here. And I kept saying, how do I bring this up? How do I bring this up? But I didn't want to see this drop. Mm -hmm. So I was like not willing to let this go. So when I, when I had the metaphorical chains on the door that moment, I turned to my right hand gal and I said, okay, what if we just pretend that we are closed and let's have half the staff serve our patients in the brick and mortar and you and I just go all in in our virtual world and see what we could create. So we did. And it's been amazing. Like not only, I was trying to figure out how to get from one-on-one coaching to groups. So we just figured out. We talked about that like, I don't know, eight weeks ago or whatever it was, three, four months ago at your, when you finished your manuscript. Yep. Like, but how do I do groups? Right? And I told you, I'm like, I don't, well, I have something we've created that is going to be amazing. And I'm so excited about it. And then, um, and then once we got, like what you said, once we got clarity, 
the, the business is just flowing in. I mean, it's really crazy when you're clear on what you're selling and what, and you're excited about it. So we have absolutely had the best month ever in our virtual world ever. Yeah. And it still is like flowing in like affiliates and programs and front end and back end. And it's like, Oh my God, like it's really crazy, but I had to let go of the old. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I always would walk around and say my brick and mortar is like my firstborn. This is really tough. Yeah, that's, that's it's, right. It's like killing the baby. I'm like, but I made this baby. I worked really hard to make right, the baby. Right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's big stuff. All right. Best month yeah. ever for your virtual business. Love that. Karen, let's have your before and after. Well, last April I had churned in my, I, I, my, my um, chronic Did pleasure. You my castle last April. Is that when you finished your manuscript? No, we were at the castle in December because it was my oh. birthday, okay. December thirteen. That's oh, when my book. That's when my book, uh, Chronic Pleasure, my first book, came out. And so by April, I had already, I was already making good money and I was having fun. But what's happened over the last year, in addition to the situation that's going on now, is that. You know, when you see your clients thrive in ways that they didn't even know that they, that was possible, and you see them unlock things that they'd been struggling with, you know, their whole life over and over and over again, like with pretty much every single client, it, it creates a sense of, and I was confident before, but like the amount of, of trust I have in my capacity has increased. And so it has continued to go up and up. Although I have taken like time off when I was writing the second book, I didn't go and try to get any new clients or anything. I still got them, but I didn't make any effort at all. I still don't make that much effort, but this month, so many more clients have come in and I would, I, I, I'm not sure if it's, if it's actually the very best um, in terms of revenue, although it might be, but I've been an actor and as an actor, you can make a lot of money. And, um, you know, I mean, I made, but what about for your coaching business? Best. For coaching. Yeah. So for coaching, it's been getting steadily more and more and more, but this month it felt like it accelerated. I was getting more clients like almost every day I was either getting a, a, a new client or, or, you know, it was just kept increasing, increasing, increasing. So now my whole uh, group of clients, it's just much bigger and it's more fun. And my, uh, I'm watching them transform so fast that it just, it's blowing me away. <laughs> and so, and I, I feel like the, the whole situation of people being in lockdown, it's giving them an opportunity to really see what's important to them and really see, you know what, I've had these blocks, I've had these things, these areas in my life that haven't been thriving. I'm not working as much now. Now is the time for me to take action and really change these things. And I'm watching my clients that, you know, the people that come to me, they're really transforming massively. And it's just, it just feels amazing. So I'd say in terms of revenue, it's, it's probably my best year, but I'm not um, total or my best month, my best in, since I've been coaching, if, if it's not the very best, it's one of the very best um, in terms of the revenue, but it might be the very best. I just didn't and look at client results, best month for client results. Oh, for sure. I mean, and, and just like massive I mean, Which is even more fun because I think when people are thinking about writing a book and how it might change them in their business, like a lot of what they're thinking about is money. Like, will I make more money? Will it be better for my business? Will I get more clients? Will people who read the book want to work with me? But I, like the thing I'm always looking for with people is people who are jazzed up about the transformation piece and changing yeah. people's lives, whether they feel better in their body, feel better in their relationships, feel better in their homes. I know you work on so many different problems, feel better with their parenting. So many people are going through parenting challenges, having adult children at home, having little kids at home, fighting with their partner about that. Like when you see that like light bulb go off and that switch happen and you know they could have done it on their own, but it might've taken a decade. Yeah. Yeah. I mean this, and the acceleration that's happening with my clients, it is, everybody's noticing it. In, like when we, when, when people, we have the group calls, the people, the other people are going, can you, can you believe just like two weeks ago you were like this and now you're like this. 
And you know, it's just so much. Oh, I say that sometimes it looks like it's time-lapse photography. It really it is. Clients, like they'll sit differently. They start dressing differently. They change like where their desk is. So they're better lit. Their energy is totally different on the call. Their video, and I'm like, do you see how it's like time lapse photography in the nine weeks? It really we've is. Yes, yes, yes. So, so my my um my heart has felt like it's been overflowing more and more. Like the abundance in my heart has been just like so much more than ever. And I've had an abundant heart for years. Oh, and one thing I really loved um, that I learned not too long ago. Two things actually. When you're in a state of, of love and you're in a state of like your heart being open or appreciation or joy and, and you maintain it for four days and I've maintained it for 10 years, your um, immunoglobulin A, which is part of your immune system, it's an antibody that your immune system makes, it goes up by about 50% after four days. Now imagine if you were to be in that state of love for month after month after month after month after month, which is a tiny divot you know, here and there, but hardly ever. Um, and then the other thing is when you're in a, in a happy and, and joyful, love-filled state, your mind works 30, 31% better. So you have better cognitive function just from being For in sure. that state of joy. Yeah. yeah, that makes total sense. Um, you also had a fun thing happen. I think this happened in April or maybe just the social media graphic happened in April. But did you get that beautiful Deepak Chopra endorsement in April? Um, yeah, I got it actually a little bit before, but I never posted it. Um, but it was yeah, so beautiful. Do you remember what he said? Do you, do you uh, he said something like Karen Laurie radiates chronic pleasure. I don't know. I can look real quick. It's a it. beautiful quote. It was so beautiful. And he said, "What did he say? Let me just find it because it's right here." He said, "Karen Laurie." Karen Laurie's love radiates to you. You can trust Karen is the real deal. She embodies chronic pleasure and teaches you to do the same. I loved that. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I want to ask you, queen of chronic pleasure and radiating love, um, what is one piece of advice that you might want to share? And then also if you have a way for people to get in touch with you um, that you might want to share as well. Yes. Well, I have found that when I, I started coaching people, but I hadn't removed all the unconscious blocks. This was like 11 years ago. And what I've realized is that when you really let go of everything that has ever bothered you, this is the advice, you, your coaching will go to a whole nother level. Your abundance goes to another level. Everything shifts. And so if you're a person who has a business and it doesn't matter whether it's a restaurant or an acupuncture business or you're a coach or a, a, a kindergarten teacher, whatever it is, if you really release all the unconscious blocks and allow the power of your spirit to be so present in your life that you are able to like fly all the time, that's, that's the best way to live. And there's so many people who try who teach it, you know, and so, you know, I, I I just feel blessed that I'm able to teach it in a really effective way. And people say that my way is really effective and helpful to them. And then what I'd like to offer people, um, I would like to offer people both my books, The Chronic Pleasure, which is um, how to let go of fatigue and pain and have vibrant energy and chronic pleasure. And the other one is Effortless Enchantment, which is a memoir. And they both kind of dovetail together. So if you send me an email to Karen Laurie, so it's K-A-R-E-N-L-O-R-R-E, at me, me com, And I'll just repeat that. That's Karen Laurie, K-A-R-E-N-L-O-R-R-E -R -R -E at me, me com. Then, and just put in the subject line, you know, send me your books or something like that. And, and write your name in the email because some people's emails are like artist of 1969. And I'm like, well, what, who are you? Who are are you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I wanted to say one more thing because you guys are talking about the rise of the divine feminine. Yes. And while I see that, but what I'm also seeing is the rise of the divine masculine. And I'm seeing these incredible um, connections with wonderful uh, men that are so in their heart and so in their, um, their passion for life. And so that combination to me, I, it doesn't feel like it's one-sided. It feels like we're all rising up and it's this incredible... Um, 
forgive the word, but the, the incredible marriage between the men and the women's energy when, when we're all moving into this divine, this divine aspects of ourselves, the capacity of relationships is off the charts. I mean, it's what no, people can start having relationships like nothing they have ever experienced before when they move into their divinity, whether it's divine feminine or divine masculine. And I'm watching even when I coach just one client, how the other client starts to rise up and become that divine masculine or divine feminine, whichever the opposite of the client I'm coaching. I'm coaching the client and they become their divinity. And then the other one. The other partner just shines. Yeah. It's amazing yeah. watching that happen. Yeah. Well, I love that. And we'll make sure um, in case you missed Karen's email address with any um, anything these authors share, we'll make sure we email that out to you as well. Not the books, but we'll make sure you have her contact info and you know how to track all of these authors down to learn more about them. Poe, I'm going to go over to you. Do you have a piece of advice and maybe a gift you would like to share? Yes. Um, it's so hard to pick one, but um, I will pick one. <laughs> I think right now, since people are going through so much, um, like I was saying, it's kind of like a magnifying glass right now. And so a lot of people are seeing different parts of themselves. Um, and so I find that mirror work is so powerful to be able to really connect with yourself, like looking into your soul. You always have all the best tools. Oh my God. This, this I love, you're like the tool queen. Every time I talk to you, you have another technique. It's amazing. <laughs> it's all about the practices because they help to clear the energy, the stuck energy and all the subconscious beliefs. It really is about just being present with yourself and loving on yourself. So in the mirror, you can like really just look at your face and connect with the spirit in your eyes and tell yourself, I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. You know, like just really just talk to yourself as if you were your own best friend mm. or mother or lover. And also for, you know, a lot of the work I do is around uh, sex as well and um, pussy work, if I can even say that. You Sorry. can. And I think you brag, didn't you brag that you like were naked in high heels, like dancing around your apartment or something? Yeah, so I wear my stilettos and I'll just be naked working on the laptop because it's about bringing pleasure. And even my necklace says pussy magic. I love that. There's so much power. This is like for women, this is the source of our creation. So you posted that and every morning I've been swimming, which I like go downstairs and I put on my Speedo and my goggles and my like bathing cap. And you posted that and I did my laps. And I'd read it just before I jumped in the pool. And then I was like, fuck it, I think I'm going to hang out in the pool naked for a little while. And instead of going upstairs and taking a shower, I like took my bathing suit off. I was like swimming naked. I was doing cartwheels. The only place I can do cartwheels is in the pool. Also handstands. <laughs> I'm amazing in the pool, Karen. I will race you. So I wanted to tell you, you inspired me to like get naked and go on a date with myself. It was wet I and sexy. Love that. Yes. I love that. Being naked just changes your energy. It literally, the oxytocin, like all the hormones, you just feel juicier. And when you're in your turn on, so much magic happens. So yeah. Yes, I'm all about being naked um, and still- Awesome, naked. we made that your second, mirror work also, Get Naked with Poe. That's her new program. <laughs> there you go. Find out about her new program, Get Naked with Poe. <laughs> yes, it's a very juicy program. Um, <laughs> so my offering is if um, I have a master class that I created that goes through all the chakras and how they affect you and your business because every chakra can be uh, broken down into its shadow or its light. And so it guides you through that process. And so you can email me at po at thelightactivator.com. That's P-O at the light, L-I-G-H-T, activator.com. I love that, the light activator. Yeah, I'll send that video out to you. Um, and I hope you all enjoy it. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. Mindy, let's hear some advice from you. What do you have for people? Okay, so I, I, I don't have get naked, although that was, that was pretty good. I was like, huh, I haven't given that advice yet, but especially around oxytocin, that was awesome. Um, you know, I think my biggest advice is who are you going to be when you come out of this? Mm -hmm. And 
I know that in the middle of it, when I first heard it, the one thing that I was really clear on is that I was not going to be the same person. And I was really willing to be a different person and let this process shape me into an even better version of me. So like in my community, we do a lot of coaching people through different nutrition and detox strategies. And so I've, I've had a lot of my community come to me and say, I'm fearful of my immune system because of you know, X, Y, and Z. So it's an incredible time for them to clean their health up and come out of this healthier than they went in. Don't you so, feel like even as a country, I hmm. feel like the whole country is gonna be healthier yeah. at the end of this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, part of that's because people, some people who are sick are gonna die, but which is like super sad and horrible, but also, and there's some sort of survival of the fittest thing happening, but yeah. so many of the rest of us are inspired to like get healthier, do an honest inventory, take control of our health instead of expecting yeah. doctors to fix it. Cause we see they're just humans. We're watching them all human, be very human right now. I think when they, especially about America, I don't know Canada as much, but like we're one of the least healthy countries and there are all these statistics about, you know, weight and cholesterol and all this. I think it's going to look very different two years from now. Well, the first couple of weeks I was running around going, oh my God, the vaccine is not coming. And by the way, I don't think it's coming. I think that there's too many barriers, but I'm like, what are people going to do while they wait 18 months for this theoretical vaccine to show up, there is a mirror right staring right at them that they're going to have to work on their own health. And there's never been that level of awareness around their own health in the 25 years I've been in practice. So I, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> so look at your, you know, my advice is be a different person when you come out of this. And um, I also love what Poe said, like I've really, what's calmed me is to go into service and how can I serve my community? How can I serve my family, my 80 year old parents? Like every time I'm in service, I feel better. Um, and then the last thing is my book giveaway, which is always kind of funny because it's called the menopause reset. And I don't think a, a lot of people are thinking about their menopause symptoms right now. But I will tell you that if you take a menopausal woman and you bring home her college age kids and you put them all in the same house together, there's a little bit of anxiety going on. So the sure. five I did a podcast interview the other day with um, an amazing woman, Amy Pearson. And she was like, before we do this interview, I'm just having a hot flash. So we're just <laughs> going to wait until my interview starts. Yeah. And I'm like, there's a lot of that going around right now. Because I think stress, a lot of those whether it's brain fog, whether it's hot flashes, whether it's weight gain, yeah. a lot of the symptoms of menopause and perimenopause, lockdown brings them all to the surface. Yeah, we're doing a big weight loss uh, of a, like two week process in a, in a couple of weeks and it's filled up faster than ever before because of that reason. I'm sure. Yeah. So, so how do people find you? I wish I could ramble off my URL. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna put that up. We're gonna make sure okay. you get their URL. But were you are you giving people your book? I'm giving my book. My you okay. can menopause reset. Um, you can also the great place to go dive into my stuff is on YouTube. I have a, I put out a couple of videos a week educating people. Um, so we we have a whole immune series over there. But if you are having hormonal uh, changes, if you're a woman over forty, you need the menopause reset because it's a lifestyle process that will help you. I love it. So we'll make sure you get a copy of Mindy's book. And our last tip of today from Jill McCabe. I want to talk about community. Mm. I think if I have one thing to say to you, um, how I have overcome so many things. And you just see this group of us talking right now. Part of our success comes from the fact that we are an R. And I've helped a lot of people reinvent their lives, reinvent their worlds through reinventing their business and their profitability. And um, that doesn't mean I don't need a coach. <laughs> you know, I need a community where I can be a peer. I think one of the worst things that we have in this world is this concept of DIY. Mm. It's not about what you know. That's not what heals you. That's not what gets you somewhere good. Being around people who we could focus on anything right now. We could focus on all the sad things. Like we could focus on 
lots of that. But we're focusing on telling great stories because it's good for our brains, it's good for our hearts, and it's good for the future. And so I love this community. I loved everything that everybody here had to say. And all I can say to you is go become a part of the most positive community you can possibly find. Maybe let go a little bit of that DIY mentality. Be and a very fast story, I saw one of my old uh, program participants, she did something with me and she works in the hospitals and I saw her posting online and it was like getting dark and it was understandable. She was upset. There wasn't enough equipment. There wasn't all this stuff. And I reached out and I said, who are you hanging around? <laughs> and she went, oh my God. And she's absolutely blossomed since then. She's focusing on positive things, even though stuff is going on in hospitals. And that's what I'm going to say to you get a community, think about what you really want for your future, and then find a community to support you in that. Um, I don't think there's anything more important. If I think that's the shortcut to success, frankly. 100%. So, uh, yes, of course I have a gift. So I really focus on um, helping people who have teaching or coaching businesses, some sort of skill, uh, have a business online that works. So I have uh, seminar five mistakes even the smartest teaching coaching based businesses make especially when they're trying to go virtual you can email me at Jill uh, Jill at J I L L Jill McCabe J I L L M C A B E dot com just email me and say five mistakes and you have heard me mention my book it's go time if it's time for you to re reinvent yourself your life or your business uh, then you're more than welcome to email me for that too. I'm happy to share uh, either or both with you if that's what you would like. And um, be well. Hey, I love that. Thank you so much. Super generous. I definitely want to echo your thoughts on um, the DIY aspect. I've mentioned for us, we really as a company have focused Q2 is all about our current clients. So we're focusing as a team on our current clients and that's been a big revenue hit for us. We have lots of expenses. Luckily, we got a bunch of grants and loans from the government so that we can pay those bills in the meantime. But in most areas of my life, I cut expenses. I went through my credit cards, I canceled subscriptions. I was like, how can I cut expenses? In one area, I massively increased my expenses. And that was getting a coach and joining a community. Mm -hmm. And I always believe in coaching and I always have coaches and projects and things that I'm learning and it's fun, but I got super serious. I was like, if I'm gonna come through the other side, I need to have a super tight community and a coach that Everyone in that group has eight or nine figure businesses. They have teams. They have the same challenges that we have and a super positive mindset because I know I'm going to be the average of who I'm around. And I suddenly had a huge list of questions. How honest should I be with my staff? Like how honest should I be with my clients? What are other people doing and saying? And there are things, if you're reinventing yourself, if you're reinventing your marriage, if you're reinventing your business, your weight, any of that, where having a community so you can look at what they're doing and get some ideas and reorient yourself in space and time. So I might have cut other expenses, but now is the time to go all in on finding your tribe, your community. Um, May 1st, we reopened our application process. So we are starting to let new authors in. Um, if you think you might want to be in a community of transformational authors like these amazing women, um, go to theauthorincubator.com slash apply. You can apply um, to be a part of our community there. So the doors are reopening. I'm so excited to share these authors and their work with you. And to just inspire you to know when you're ready, the best month ever is waiting for you. You can thrive through the chaos, through the change and everything when you're in alignment with your truth and you are ready to show up and serve. So I'm so grateful, Karen, Jill, Poe, Mindy. I love your work. I love you guys. And thank you for sharing your stories and congrats on the best month ever. <laughs>